Hello friends, today we're talking about how to begin the Fly Lady System, part two. So after you've done the initial Fly Lady System introductory video that I just put out for you yesterday, uh, and you've done that for a week, maybe two weeks until you start to feel comfortable with that, you feel like you're committed to this, you're really anxious to get going, then you're gonna start part two. Part two is the basic weekly plan. That means that there's something to do seven days a week that affect your life, your home life, your family's life, um, taking care of your home, taking care of yourself. So here's what they are. If you're at home homemaker on Mondays, you will do the weekly home blessing hour. Now this is a blessing, it is not a deep cleaning. It is a skim the surface, quickie clean. It takes exactly one hour at the most, no matter how big your house is. If your house is small, after you've done it for a month or two, you may be able to condense it down to only 30 minutes. But if you have a big house or a normal size house, I'd say, you know, 1,200 to, 4, 1200 to 1,400 feet would be the, the, you could probably do it in 30 minutes type of house. Mine was 1,400, I could do it in 30 minutes when I had a home instead of living, well, I have a home, when I had sticks and bricks. <laughs> um, I could do it in 30 minutes, but only after I practice it for a while, okay? All right, so here's what you do in the weekly home blessing hour. You strip your bed, you wash your sheets, you dry your sheets, you put your sheets back on your bed. That's part one. That does not take very long. You're putting your sheets, you're stripping the bed, maybe three minutes at the most. You're putting them in the washing machine, another minute, putting some soap in and turning it on and then they're doing their thing. Then you go on and do something else in your weekly home blessing hour. At some point, you'll say, oh, I need to put those in the dryer. You'll put them in the dryer. You'll go on and do something else. At some point, you'll be done with your weekly home blessing hour and on in the middle of your day, and you'll say, oh, I think my sheets are dry. Let me go put them back on my bed. Do try to set some kind of reminder for yourself to put them back on your bed, or you'll end up like me with my husband getting ready for bed and going into the bedroom and saying, cat, there's no sheets on the bed. Darn. <laughs> so I don't want that to happen to you, especially if you're tired. That's the last thing I want to do at the end of the day, and I'm sure it's the last thing you want to do. So go put your sheets on the bed. All right. Next. Okay, so that's happening kind of in the background of the weekly home blessing hour. The next thing we're going to do, we have the three what I call baby jobs. These are things that are easily delegated to your younger children. Um, you know, not too young, but let me tell you what they are. They are dusting the whole house. I know that sounds like just a huge job and you can't even imagine delegating that, but if you get yourself a Fly Lady Feather Duster, flylady.net slash tools, that's where you can find it. It's going to run you anywhere from $27 to $40, but it is an investment in the future and you will be able to dollar cost average this out. Mine lasted 10 years the last time. I've got a new one now, but it lasted 10 years and it still had life in it. I just bought a new one because I have a new lifestyle. Um, so get yourself a feather duster. It's got a handle, a wooden handle on it. You'll be able to reach things. You'll be able to reach things you wouldn't imagine that you would have even dust normally, like going by your cabinets, just dusting, going by the, the ceiling fan, giving it a dust. You know, it's just quick and easy. So you can do your whole house in 10 minutes. And what I advise you to do is to divide the house into five rooms and hit those five rooms two minutes a room. Boom. Okay. That's one. Now, if you have a very young child, of course they can't do that, but they could do a little. You can have them work in a little bit, okay? Um, the second job is a baby job too, because again, these are easy jobs for you, and that's emptying out the little garbage cans in your house. Your big garbage can in the kitchen needs to be emptied every day. I don't even mention that, because that's something that should already be happening for health reasons. You need to empty your garbage can every day. But the little ones you can empty uh, once a week or whenever they get full. So my bathroom gets emptied more often than that. However, yours may not. You may not use it as much as I do. You may not use as much Kleenex or cotton balls or whatever, <laughs> okay? All right, so emptying all the little garbage cans. You might have them in the office. You might have them in your bedroom. You might have them in the bathroom. You might have them in your children's rooms. If you don't, consider doing that because that's why there's a lot of trash sometimes. There's not a place to put it and lazy kids just drop it, okay? All right, that's two. So if you, again, you just do that in 10 minutes. 
That's five minutes to empty, five minutes to put new liners in, stick them back in the rooms they belong in. Kids can do that. Third is the glass. To, to wipe the spots on the glass. That does not mean we're getting Windex and doing the whole window or the whole mirror or the whole uh, dresser mirror. We're not. We're just looking around. We get, we've got a little microfiber rag. We've got part of it a little bit damp and we're going to look for spots and wipe the spots. It usually takes a whole lot less than 10 minutes to get that done. Then we've got two other jobs and those are floor jobs. One is the main part of the house, not the kitchen and bathrooms, but the other part of the house needs to be vacuumed or in some way the floors need to be cleansed of dirt, sucked up dirt, you know what I mean? So if you have a hard surface, you can use a really lightweight little vacuum cleaner like you can on your carpet, or if you don't have any carpet in your house at all and don't want a vacuum cleaner, you can use a dust mop. But we are not, we are not mopping these floors, we're not getting them wet, we're just, remember, we're just doing a blessing. And so you're going to do, if you're vacuuming, you're gonna get a real light little featherweight uh, vacuum cleaner and you're gonna vacuum just the walking areas of your carpet, just the traffic patterns. So again, take your five main rooms. The rooms I always use were my bedroom, the hallway, the guest room, um, or my office, um, the, the second bedroom and the downstairs, the living room, <clears throat> the great room. That's how my house was before. Okay, not the stairway. Um, you might hit the, the hallway a little bit, but that's it. And then, so if you do that, take two minutes a room and go, 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 go. You're not gonna get all the crevices. You're not gonna put pretty marks. You're just doing this really quickly. And then when you do the final thing, that is to mop your kitchen and bathrooms. Again, something easy, a tool is so important. I just have a dirt devil, is it a dirt devil? No, it's an O cedar squirt mop. I love it, you just put your own water in it. You, I put like a cap full of Mrs. Meyer's uh, general purpose cleaner, cleaner in it, and you, it has a, a removable microfiber pad that you can wash in the washing machine. So keep that pad on it, keep it full and ready to go. And then you just squirt and, and lightly mop your kitchen in three minutes. We're not giving it the hard scrub, we're just getting it lightly, we're not getting the corners, we're just getting a quickie in the kitchen. And then two minutes per bathroom. So if you just have one bathroom, this project will only take you five minutes. If you have three bathrooms, it's gonna take you 10 minutes, close to. Okay, then put all your things away and you're done. Maybe you still have to put the sheets on the bed, but you're done. Okay, that happens on Monday. That's a weekly home blessing hour. It's not a six hour clean, it's a one hour clean. So uh, you plan it. You say, I'm gonna do this when the children are taking a nap today. I'm gonna do this after lunch today. I'm gonna delegate this to my 12 year old. Remember that anyone who is strong enough, smart enough, and has manual dexterity is a person who can do any job you do in the house, and that's the truth. So most nine-year-olds and all 12-year-olds can do almost everything you do in the house because they're smart. You know they're smart. Manual dexterity, have you seen them? <laughs> or, you know, they play their games, they type on their keyboards, and um, physical, I mean physical strength. Can they do splits and cartwheels and run and jump and ride their surf, their, um, bikes and boards and all the things they do, of course they can. If they can't, then they're not able, and that's okay. Okay, so, you know if they're able or not, if they are, delegate. But don't ever give a child a big job, just a five minute job. This is what I want you to do, please don't spend more than five minutes, okay? Maybe 10, if it's vacuuming or whatever. All right, next we're gonna go to Tuesday. Tuesday is your free day. There's nothing extra to do on Tuesday. We don't do zone work. We do routines and that's it. There's nothing else to happen on Tuesday. It's a free day, okay? That means that you're gonna find something fun to do for yourself. Maybe you need to do your nails and you never get that done. Even though your house is cluttered, even though there's still lots of things to do in your house, you're still gonna do a free day for yourself. You're gonna go sit and have coffee with a friend or go for a walk in the park or go window shopping or actual shopping um, for yourself, not for the household. Um, of course, if you have children, you're going to be able to play with your children. There are things that are going to happen. It all depends on your situation, but it's your free day from cleaning, okay? Wednesday is planning and desk day. This is a quiet day. 
This is the day where you do a four-part thing, and that is planning and desk day. So the first part is food. You're going to check your refrigerator, and you're going to look to see if anything needs to be thrown away, if any dishes need to be washed, like those Tupperware containers or plastic containers in there. If they've grown mold, I've been known to throw them all away. Okay. If there's any melted zucchini or molded mushrooms or any of those things, out they go. Uh, maybe a quick little wipe of the fridge. You're not going to deep clean it, but maybe a little wipe if there's a milk ring or there's some jelly that spilled or you have some melted zucchini mess. <laughs> okay, so give it a little wipe down and kind of organize like things together because tomorrow you're going to buy groceries. So today we're going to get it all set up and ready. Okay, you're also going to notice that your staples might be missing or getting low. Maybe you need milk, maybe you need eggs, maybe you need yogurt, maybe you need um, whatever whatever you normally have in there, juice. So you're going, to keep an, you're going to keep a little list. Then you're going to pull open or open up the freezer. And you're going to see what you have in there by way of meat, vegetables, um, and other things. What do you have in there? How is it? Do you need to throw out that ice cream that's got freezer burn and you haven't eaten it in six months, needs to go, get rid of some things, organize it a little bit. If you do this every week, it won't be a big, a big project. The first time it might be. All right, and then you're going to look in your pantry and you're going to decide what in there you can use in your meals this week. Because as, you, as you've been seeing this, you can say, oh, I forgot we have that steak. Oh, I forgot we have these chicken tenders or this fish sticks or whatever it is you have. I, I can make some meals out of these things. Oh, we've got some frozen uh, lasagna or whatever. Okay, and then you look in the pantry and you say, yeah, I've got spaghetti noodles. They're still in good shape. They're not expired or whatever. If you haven't checked your pantry in a while, before you commit something to a meal, make sure it hasn't expired. This is not the time to clean your pantry. This is just a time to kind of organize it and see what you've got. But do check expiration dates before you use something. Thank you. Okay, that's the food part. Now you're going to sit down and you're going to make a menu. This is also this is food part, food part, part B. You're going to make a menu based on what you have, and then you're going to make some other things that you don't that you want to have you don't have the things for so let's say in your refrigerator in your refri freezer um, you have some ham and you have some chicken and you have some pork chops and you have some fish and you have some frozen uh, spaghetti sauce so you've got the basis for five meals right there you go in your pantry you've got pasta so now you can make a pasta meal with the spaghetti sauce um, uh, you noticed in your refrigerator you still have Parmesan cheese. It's not expired. It's still good. <laughs> okay, uh, and you found some, a half a loaf of frozen uh, garlic bread, and it's still good. It's not icy. It's it's great. It's enough for your family. Okay, so you need some lettuce or some salad mix or whatever. And how's your Italian dressing? It's good. It hasn't expired. We'll use that. Okay, so there's a meal right there. And you do the same thing with everything you have. You look in your pantry, you look in your freezer, you look in your refrigerator, and you make up a menu just with three things. In general, you can add more, but the meat or the protein, some kind of starch, if you're eating starches, I know some of you aren't, but I am, like rice or potatoes or pasta, etc. cetera. Um, and then some vegetable or vegetables. And that's your meal. That's a very simple way to prepare to think of a meal. Lasagna has it all. I mean, you might want to put a side salad or you might want to put some, um, you don't have to, you know, garlic bread or whatever, but that's a meal. Okay. So you make up seven meals. Actually, I probably wouldn't make seven. I'd probably make five or six because there's often leftovers that you can serve on one of the days. Then you're going to make a grocery list based on what you don't have because you've got all this stuff to make it, but you didn't have salad. And let's say you didn't have some green beans and needed some fresh potatoes and you needed, so you're making your list. It won't be huge because you've got all this stuff to cook from in your house. And then you sit down and you make up a grocery list. Maybe you're making it on the Walmart, uh, Walmart site so you'll know how much it is. So that kind of helps you with your budget, okay? Or whatever, Kroger or Publix or wherever you're buying your groceries. And then... You're done with food. Now we're going to go into finance. This is part two. Finance is paying your bills, checking your account, making sure you're balanced. That means that you have the amount of money you thought you should have in there. 
and checking to make sure you're not going over budget. If you don't have a budget, then you need to make a budget. There's a site online called You Need a Budget. It's great. I totally agree with everything they talk about, and you can get it free for a little while, okay, just to get yourself situated. All right, so then after the budget and the finance part, then you're going to do your inbox. If you don't have an inbox, I told you yesterday, go to uh, the Dollar Tree and buy a plastic inbox. It's just where your stuff goes when you're going through your paper and your routines. It goes in there, so you now need to handle that. So what's in there? Oh, I need to call the doctor. This isn't the right bill. Oh, I need to put this appointment in my book, my planner. Oh, I need to pay this bill. And I also need to um, send this document to somebody by email or whatever. You've got a reminder in there. Okay, so that's what you're doing with your inbox. So that's part three. Part four is your actual planner where you take your planner and you plan out your week. This is happening on a Wednesday. You're gonna plan from, for next week. So next week starts on a Sunday and it goes through Saturday. So you're gonna plan out the week. I have to go to the dentist on this day. I'm doing weekly home blessing hour on this day, planning a desk day on this day, etc. You're putting it in your planner. And you're also finding a spot where you can write down all your routines. In mine, I have it um, right here in front of the January calendar tab. It's all the routines. It also lists the basic weekly plan that I'm going over with you now, right there, and then uh, the zones, which we're going to go over tomorrow, and then any other things, okay? So this is what you're building right now. If for this week, you're going to also need a plan for tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. You need a plan for the rest of this week, so you're going to be planning a little extra. It's probably going to take you a couple of hours, maybe even three. Um, you might want to split it up over two days, but not your free day, okay? That's Wednesday. Thursday is errand day. That's where you pick up or have delivered your groceries or you go grocery shopping. You also make a circuit of all the places you're going to go. You make sure you have a cooler in your car if you're going to put hot or cold items in that. Uh, if you're shopping, um, you're also going, like you might buy a a baked hen, a baked ro a rotisserie chicken. So you might need a small one to put that in. And then your cold items go in another one or zip bags or something. Or if you're gonna come right back home, that's great. But if you've got to go to the grocery store and you've got to go to Costco and you're gonna stop at Sam's and you gotta to go to the jewelers to drop off your ring and you gotta to go to the place to buy that tool for your husband and then come home, then you want to make sure, and you might want to go backwards, go to the place for the husband, drop off your jewelry, then go to Costco, then go to Sam's, then, or Sam's, then go to Costco, then go to the grocery store. However, but just make sure that you're making a circuit. You're not zigzagging and spinning all day. And remember, we're not going to lollygag. This is a day where we're really paying attention to what we're doing. This is, you're on a mission. This is not a free day. You're on a mission, okay? All right, next is uh, Friday and on Friday that is car and purse day and that's when you go and look in your car and get out all the junk that's not supposed to be in there. Put it in a Walmart bag or a grocery bag or a garbage bag or whatever and get it out of the car. Take it in the house and sort it out. Is it garbage, give away, put away? That's it. You only have three things. Garbage, give away, put away. All right. A lot of it will be garbage. And don't leave things in there that are going to become flying missiles if you slam on the brakes. And other things that are gross, like milk in a sippy cup, you know, those things have to come out. Um, get those things out of your car and maybe shake the mat. So you don't have to deep clean it. You don't have to take it and get it washed. It's a nice thing to do, but you don't have to. You just have to get that stuff out. It's going to make you feel better. And it's going to make it easier to clean if you do take it to be cleaned. Okay? That's your car. Your purse, you're going to empty out and you're going to refill it properly. You know, you're going to put things where they really belong that's nice and convenient. Your lipstick is here, your Kleenex are here, your wallet is here, your keys go here, etc. Okay, your hand cream, whatever, in your purse. You're also going to wipe your purse off or change purses. Wipe your purse off that you were using and stuff it with something. I put, like to put paper in mine and put it on the shelf, keep it in good shape and change purses. Maybe that's something you need to start thinking about doing. But I am one who just uses a purse till it falls apart. I have other purses. I'm the worst. But be better than me. Okay, so that happens on Friday. Also on Friday, we try to have a date night with our spouse without children. Children do not belong on a date night. 
children are going to want your attention, want your attention, want your attention, and you are not going to be able to give attention to your spouse or receive attention from your spouse. You have to build and keep that relationship so that when the children do grow up and go away, you have something here. You're not strangers, okay? So it doesn't have, a, it doesn't have to be a fantastic date where you get all dressed up in your little black dress and your pumps. No, your heels, whatever they're calling them nowadays. I don't wear them anymore. Um, but it is a date where the two of you get to spend time together to talk about your hopes and your dreams. Uh, yeah, you'll talk about the kids a little bit. That's inevitable, but try not to do that too much. It's about you two, okay? That happens on Friday. So you might wait till the kids are in bed and go in the backyard and enjoy the stars together in your lounge chairs, whatever. It's a date. It's time for you to be together. On Saturday, it is family fun day. Nothing else. You're not doing any clothes on that day you're not you're making your bed you're doing your routine that's it then you're gonna have fun with your family so you don't save things for the weekend you get that all done during your work week as an at-home homemaker if you're a payroll homemaker we're gonna flip it around a little bit you're gonna do your routines during the week maybe a little laundry you might have to do some laundry on Saturday as well maybe Sunday afternoon um, for your basic weekly plan you're gonna do that on Saturday morning right after breakfast and for your planning and desk day, you can do that on Sunday afternoon. Um, picking up your groceries can happen sometime during the next week. Uh, if, if you work, I suggest you order them and pick them up on the way home or have them delivered. Um, if that's not an option, it's not an option. You just do the best you can, but pick your groceries up at some point or delegate that to your spouse. Maybe on Saturday while you're doing weekly home blessing hour. Um, and then what else that's errand day any other errands I would run on my lunch hour as a person who was a payroll homemaker for 40 years that's what I would do I would run personal errands on my lunch hour um, then on Friday car and purse day you can do that on your lunch hour too. just go out and get those few little things put them in your Walmart bag that you keep in your office put them on the front seat when you get home take them out and make it a point not to let that stuff accumulate in your car going forward your purse can also be handled at work you can do it on your break go in your break room if you need to or at your desk empty things out don't empty things out dig through your purse rearrange it get the Kleenex the gum wrappers and those things out and throw them away don't dump your purse on the break room table bad form <laughs> okay um, and then the other thing Saturday is is going to still be family fun day after you get your weekly home blessing hour done and later your zone done and some laundry um, Sunday is renew your spirit for everyone renew your spirit so go to church if you haven't been going I encourage you to go back to church okay that's it for today I hope you have a wonderful day I hope you enjoy the second set of things to do knowing that we're still not at the zones yet the zones are coming tomorrow where we're going to talk about the part three of our th i call it a three-layer cake routines basic weekly plan and zones that's what makes us have a sweet life a three-layer cake so right now this is what you're working on for the next week or so along with your routines you're going to now you're going to be spinning two plates all right that's it for today have a fabulous day and always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful Bye.